Hey everybody, I just got done doing a typing demo on this fantastic Silent Super. It's a 1954 um, and um, it types so well and I haven't, I don't think I've done a tutorial video for a Silent Super in a while. I just don't remember. So I decided I'm going to do a pretty basic tutorial, but first I'm going to put in a non-slip typewriter pad. I never promote our stuff here on the tutorial videos, but today... I had forgotten my typewriter, um, non-slip typewriter pad, which we have manufactured. Um, we worked with somebody to create it. And I love them because when you, if you don't have one and you have a, a solid, this is like a marble top, then your typewriter just, it scooches everywhere. And so while this doesn't eliminate 100% of it, it sure makes a big difference. So love our typewriter pads. You can visit our website and find them there. Okay, so this is, let me take this out, a silent super. And so it's supposed to be a little bit quieter than your just a uh, regular, like a standard or a um, sterling or something like that, just a regular typewriter is supposed to, the sound is supposed to be dampened a little bit. And I think I do have a video comparing, uh, I, I don't know if it's a silent super, or a couple of typewriters together so you can hear the difference. And I will try to remember to link that, you know, for it to pop up here um, as a suggested video. But um, today I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial for this silent super they're pretty common you probably um if your family has a typewriter there's a really good chance it's going to be a smith corona or a royal um, these are pretty common out there so if you've got one grab it and follow along um, in case you're needing to know how to use your typewriter so we're going to start from the back so this back panel does flip open if you need to get in there to clean or anything like that but you really don't need to set anything on the silent super because the settings are down here but let's start with the carriage this is your carriage right here and to move it is these two metal um, levers doesn't matter which one you pull in but that's going to pull the carriage to the left by the way if your carriage is limp and it doesn't pull to the left that means your drawstring is broken and you'll need to see um, a professional repair person. I do have a typewriter repair directory on my website. Again, the link is below. Um, and um, it is not completely up to date, but you may be able to find something there. Okay, here is your paper holder and um, your margin sets. So you just press down on these, these um, metal half moons, kind of looks like. And you just press down and move them to where you want them to be. And I, when I do tutorial videos, I type pretty narrow, so I bring mine in. Um, this is your like your paper bale. Um, actually, I'm not sure exactly what that is called. My husband does all the repairs. I just show you guys how to basically use it. So if you've got one and you don't know what to do with it, I'm at least here to help you get started using it. Okay, on the right side, here is the paper release, and um, you'll see more of that here in a second. And then on the left side, you'll see a one, two, and a three in the back area in this lever, and that is for your handle. This is your return handle. So what that does is it takes you to the beginning of the line, plus it advances to the next line, and you can advance one, two, or three lines. So. Here's like double line, here's triple, and that's great if you want spacing between lines to do like editing or notes or something like that, whatever you wish. Okay, I'm going to move this carriage to the left, and the reason is I want to move this handle away from the cover, and then I'm going to just take my hand right here and give it a gentle nudge. In fact, that one barely needed a nudge. Pull it open, and inside you'll see your typing basket. So here's your your um, type bars and so when you press your key that thing's gonna fold up, um, pop up and it's gonna slam against that ribbon and impress a letter um, onto a, your paper. Here's your spool. This does take a universal ribbon um, and you just pop them out like so and then there's this little metal um, 
and it's really hard to see on the video. I'm not going to lift this up, but if you look at yours, there will be a little metal piece that has a slit in it. It's got it on both sides. So when you put in a new ribbon, one, make sure the ribbon goes over the top, around the back and underneath. Black is on top, red is on bottom. You pop that in there and then you make sure the ribbon, whoops, it slid down and I kind of need my glasses because it's dark, I can't see. You wanna make sure your ribbon goes in that slit. And this is very messy. So you're either gonna wanna wear gloves or have something nearby to clean your hands. And then the same thing for that side. Um, to get it through the ribbon vibrator, I'm gonna lift this up so you can see what that vibrator looks like. If you need to take a, a screenshot of that or whatever, go ahead and do it. Um, it's hard to show you how to actually thread that ribbon in there, but you're gonna wanna look for slits. And since my husband already has the ribbon loaded, I don't know exactly where that slit is. Sometimes it's going to be in the middle section or it can be on top, but look for a slit in the metal vibrator and you're just gonna wanna um, slide that ribbon through the slit and then get it to where it's um, nice and even under there. Then um, do the same over here. And that is how to do your ribbon. Now, when you get to the end of the ribbon um, on the spool, it's not the end of the ink. You wanna reverse the direction of your ribbon. And to do that is, here's your manual reversal right here. Let's see, we're going this way. And then when you get to the end, you still have lots of ink. Just reverse that and then go back this way. And you just go back and forth many, many times before um, until you use up all of the ink in your ribbon. If you do need a replacement ribbon or a new ribbon for your typewriter, we have them on our website. And our website is listed below. This is your tension selector right down here on the left. And what that means is that it just determines how hard these type bars are gonna strike your paper. There's two ways to do that. You can adjust how you, um, the tension with which you type. My husband has a very heavy hand. I have a very light hand. So we would have different settings for this. It's actually very minor, but um, as you get more proficient, you and uh, much more sensitive it, within your touch in typing, this will become more important to you. Okay. So that is your ribbon reversal right here. And some people ask, well, don't the typewriter ribbons automatically reverse? Only if they have a grommet on the ribbon. It doesn't have to do as much with the typewriter as it does with the ribbon. And so ours do not have grommets on them, so they have to be manually reversed. Okay, this is your color selector. Right now it's on red. You go all the way up to the top and there's a blue um, dot, but it's for your black ribbon. The white is a stencil setting, meaning this ribbon, when you hit a, a key, this ribbon vibrator isn't going to move. So you can see that that ribbon vibrator isn't moving. So that type bar is just going to strike paper without a ribbon there to imprint any ink. That's a stencil setting. You probably will never ever use it. So if you're typing and all of a sudden your typewriter feels either stiff or it stops, two things to check, or the, the impression is very light, two things to check, make sure you don't need to reverse your ribbon, so try reversing the ribbon, and the other is see if your color selector has been bumped. That happens a lot, so um, make sure it's firmly on the black or the red setting, and a lot of times that will solve many, many issues. Okay, let's go ahead and load a piece of paper and we're gonna talk about um, the keyboard down here and um, your tabs and stuff like that. So I'm loading paper and you can see it's a little bit crooked. So now we're gonna use this paper release. I'm gonna pull that forward and I am gonna adjust my paper. There you go, and nice and even. Make sure to re-engage it, because if you don't, your paper's gonna slide around. So here's your keypad, and um, let's go over what they are. This arrow is your backspace. I'm gonna move that. And so backspace does not erase, it just backspaces. The arrow goes that way, um, and it always messes with my mind, because 
um, the carriage is moving that way, but your paper, um, where you the spot on your paper is going that way. But the arrow just means the carriage is going to go that direction. Um, and forcing you to go backward on your typing. Okay, so then you have a tab. So let's go over here, and I think there's a tab set on this. Yep, right there. Let's go ahead and clear it. So right here is CL, that means clear. I'm gonna press that. And there it goes. And the reason I put my hand here whenever I hit tab is because for me personally, that um, a lot of times that carriage just flies and it just, it just seems really hard. And sometimes, especially on these older, uh, on these vintage typewriters, sometimes the tabs don't always hold. And so that carriage will kind of hit the tab, but then it'll fly right by it. And um, and I've also broken several mugs because I had mugs sitting here. I've broken two handmade mugs by my um, stepdaughter and son-in-law, by the way. And I've got one here, by the way. Um, they make amazing pottery. This is one of their first pieces. Uh, they sell out all the time. So if you want to go visit them, it's Clay Plant Road. You'll see their pottery in our photos all the time. Um, or actually, it's called the Clay Plant now. They changed their name. But I'll try to put a link in there for you as well. Fantastic pottery, but you have to be on their emailing list, email list in order to be able to purchase it because they sell out literally within minutes once they open up their store. And so they just let you know when they're restocked and then you hurry on there, buy what you want. And if you're lucky, you get one. Okay. Nice plug for them. Of course, I want them to do well. They're ex anyway, let's go back to typewriters. So we were talking about the tab. So let's go ahead and set a tab. Let's set one right here. Okay. And again, I can clear it. And it's clear so that's how you set it and then we have margin release and what that is is you've got your margin right here the right margin set and there's a bell okay that dings when you get really close to your margin so that you know hey let me finish this word so i can go to the next line but sometimes you get caught and you're like right in the middle there's the bell of a word or a thought, oh, and you're at your margin. So now the typewriter is going to stop. But you're like, I really just want to finish that one word. So you hit margin release. And do it. Finish it and go to the next line. So that is your margin release. I showed you tabs. Um, here's your shift right here. Shift lock is the little one. And to release the shift lock, you just press down and release. So when you're typing, you type in lowercase. And to do uppercase, you hit shift. And I'm going to do shift lock right now. And this is uppercase. And it also, your shift does the symbols. And uh, no shift is numbers. Okay, so that is the Smith Corona Silent Super, um, the basics, what you need to know to effectively use your typewriter. I hope you found this helpful. Give us a thumbs up, like, follow, notifications, whatever, and we're so glad you're here. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.